Hi you guys, how are you? My name is Emmanuel King and I am one of the mentors here at The Talent Agency Guy. I wanna to talk to you today about the difference between agency commission, management commission, and an agency fee. So when you're on the casting sites and you see the rate of a project and then it says plus 20 or plus 10 plus agency fee, that fee is set aside as a fee from the production to the representation that is actually submitting you to your project. That portion and money has nothing to do with your contractual agency commission that you owe your agent. So for instance, if you're with a signatory talent agency, then legally they can only take 10%. Most managers are going to take 15%. Now, a manager can take up to 20% if you do not have an agent. And an agency, if they're submitting you non-union or for print, can take 20%. It's for SAG work that agencies only take 10%. When you have a contract with your manager, which is usually 15%, and your agent, which is usually 10%, once again, it could be 20, depending on your scenario and situation. That is an agreement between you and the rep that has nothing to do with per project if the production wants to pay extra for the agency or management company to submit you for the project. A lot of production companies, especially if they're lowballing the wage, they will put a plus 10, plus 15, plus 20 to incite the reps to actually submit you. Because if you're an agent and you know you're only gonna make $100 on a project, you may not even take the time to click and submit because time is money. But once people start throwing the plus 20, it gives you more of an incentive to wanna do that. Now, one of the things that I, as a manager, would always want an actor or an actress to understand not just the principles and contractually what you're supposed to do, but also what is the strategy and the wisdom behind doing the right thing. So if you have an agent and a manager who's submitting you, submitting you, and you know that you haven't even booked in the last six months, meaning that no money has come from you to that agency or that management company, you should want them to be incentivized um, and you should want them to make money. Why? Because when people make money with you, then they want to work hard for you. And there's something else that I want to connect to this. So I get this question all the time. Well, should I get an agent and a manager? Because then if I'm paying 15%, but I'm also paying 10%, then that's 25%, but then that's a lot of money because then I also have to pay taxes. Okay, if you're not getting any opportunities and you're making zero dollars, then what's the difference if you now have a team that's working on your behalf that puts you in a position to let's say make 100,000? Yes, you have to pay 25,000 and yes, you have to pay your taxes, but guess what, at the end of the day, you now have a role and guess what? You have money in your bank account before you had no opportunity and no money. So what is the common sense behind that? Yes, you have to pay out more, but you will have more opportunity to make more connections and have more power. Why? Because your reps have more power and networking ability than you have. They have more connections than you have. And you want people, especially at the beginning of your career, to open doors for you. Now, later on in your career, when people are coming to you and offering you roles just because they've seen the movies that you've done or because you're an Academy Award winner, that's different. But if nobody knows who you are and you have no opportunities and no money, then who cares if you have to pay out 35%? If you have to pay out 75%, who cares? you still get 25% versus your zero of doing nothing. So I hope that, can, I hope some of you guys catch that because it does seem like, ooh, I can get over if, if I don't pay this person and, I, and I, if, if I don't pay this agent. Like I've had clients who have gotten a non-union job 
and their agency may be so busy that their agency is not keeping track of every single check that needs to be sent to them, right? That's why there's a thing called an audit because if they ever wanted to, they could take you to court and have your stuff audited. Just look at your contract, especially if it's a signatory sad contract, there's usually something in that contract that allows them for an audit. 